Welcome to Cycles TV. This session of the Market Cycles Report is intended exclusively to provide information and education to help individuals better understand cycles and the markets. However, this information is not to be construed as professional advice as to the buying and selling of securities. In no event does the host express any opinion with respect to, or make recommendations regarding, the purchase or sale of any particular investment instrument. There is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. Buying or selling decisions are solely within the personal discretion of each individual. And now, enjoy the show. Here is your host. Yeah, welcome to the Foundation for the Study of Cycles and another episode of Cycles TV. My name is Lars Fontin and welcome to another session and a special episode also today on Cycles as we just recently managed to reprint the book from Edward Dewey, Cycles, the Mysterious Forces that Trigger Events. And due to the fact that this great publication is out in reprint from the original version, I would like to use this episode to highlight another specific chapter and topic Dewey told us in his publication and in that case uh, it's related again to chapter 9 of uh, his book The um, Cycles of Wall Street and in that chapter he also talks about um, yeah, what, what he called fake cycles and what he called fake cycles at the time of 1940, 1950, 1970 as this initial release was published is still valid when we use the cycle scanner in our environment today. So therefore the concept of fake cycles, what um, Dewey was mentioning when you analyze financial data sets and what this means is still valid and important up to today. And therefore it's always important to repeat these concepts uh, which Dewey already uh, talked about because they are for sure even important in today's world. So I would highly recommend uh, reach out to find an opportunity to uh, grab that a book. Harriman House published this original book as a reprint with the support of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. So get out, grab your version. Um, uh, it is fantastic read and today I'm talking again about oh, what I'm talking about today. <laughs> um, we're talking again about the chapter nine, nine, nine cycles of Wall Street. In the previous episode already showed you in that chapter he talked about the 41 month cycle but there's another finding which do we shared in that chapter and that's about the concept of false cycles. So what are false cycles? And the original uh, chart uh, Dewey used is shown here. So this is an original chart he explains to us in his book. So you see three cycles from the top to the bottom. So A, B, C, these are three cycles. And in the bottom, at the bottom, you see the final or the cycle D, which looks like it is one single cycle. If you just start at the bottom, it looks like this is one cycle and around the year of 1900, it seems to fade away or fade out or the cycle disappears. That's where, what we're often observing that sometimes we de detect a cycle and then the cycle is not of any help anymore on the right side of the chart. So in the, the area where we do the prediction into the future. So then the cycle does not give us any help. But if we look at the past data, yeah, it looks like, yeah, but there was this cycle. So why does this cycle disappear? Uh, why was our prediction wrong? Uh, why did we saw this cycle in the past? But from the year of 1900, that cycle disappeared. So I mean, read the original findings in chapter nine. Um, the reasoning, and that's what you here called, and you see it also at the bottom of that um, chart here. D, what we see here as D is a so-called false cycle. 
Yeah, so it looks like it is a cycle. It has these cyclic behavior. It seems to have a constant length um, and, and it's just then gone away. This is not one cycle. A false cycle means it is a composited, composite cycle, which is made out of three cycles. So D is just the sum of the cycles A, B and C. So there are three cycles in the underlying data set A, B, C, which when you sum them up, gives you the visual shape what is shown in D. So D is not one cycle. D is the sum of three real cycles. What this means, you need to be able to nail down the cycles in whatever data set to the real cycles which are in there. And that's, that's important even in today's world, while not the cycle you might visually see, maybe also in the raw data. I often see people just using the, the stock price and you see swings from top to bottom. You just count tops or align cycles to major tops and bottoms. But what you visually see like D might just be the sum of a subset of different cycles. And if you then try to extrapolate that, that visual cycle you might see in the data into the future, you, you, you will get tricked and you will be completely off with your prediction because you, you assume you're seeing a cycle, but what you see is just the combination of three cycles. So, so that's what you would call so-called false cycles. And this is, this is valid even today. So you need to be careful not being yeah, uh, uh, tricked by your visual identif identification of cycles and even not using one single cycle. Often it's more important to use a combination of cycles. And what does this mean? So let's therefore switch to some live example in what we have today. We, today we have digital signal processing uh, and we have our cycle scanner. So for sure uh, I have prepared an example out of that. So if we just start by looking um, on this data set here, which you see on the screen, yeah? Um, and this looks like, yeah, there's one cycle in that data set. So, I mean, you even don't need a, a cycle scanner. You don't need digital signal processing. Just use your eyes and count the length here from this top to that top. And you will easily be able to spot the length of that cycle. I mean, that has a constant length. The amplitude might vary a little bit, but this is clearly uh, just one cycle. So um, what's, what's, the, what's the issue here? So let me move that out of the way here. So isn't this just one cycle? As what are you telling me here? This is a false cycle. This is exactly a false cycle, which might visually make you coming to the assumption that this is a cycle with the length of just measure it on your own and it doesn't matter. I just want to show it to you. Um, so why is that a file cycle? So if this would be one cycle and let's use now this data set, um, just use the current information here as we have it here, run it through our cycle scanner and you will see uh, how okay it looks like. This is the cycle with the cycle of 57 days or weeks or anyhow, it doesn't matter in that data set here. You will then start yeah, and you see it's just overlaid. So this is the one cycle you assume is there. And then you start to uh, plot your prediction into the future. So this is today's data point and then you predict it into the future. Yeah, basic procedure as we always use here. And if you look what happens in the real data set, yeah, just the light blue, you see, ah, ooh, the, this cycle is now disappearing, disappearing. So hmm, the projection with the top or even the bottom or the top here or the low here just is off. So we assume oh, our cycle analyst does not work. Cycles do not work to do any prediction. Yeah, that's the, 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 the skepticism or, or the skeptics on cycle analysis will just find a clue. Yeah, this is what I always tell you. Cycles don't work. So, but that's not the root cause. So let's be sure what we're trying to do in here. So when we analyze cycles, and that's often what we say, you need to 
be clear about how much data you put as an input into that form here. And here we just have not enough data used to identify it. So it was just a very small amount of data. The minimum should always be 850 data points if you follow that channel here. So um, first, let's use more historical data um, to, to detect the cycle. So let's uh, end, but let's start the analysis somewhere here. So same starting point, just using more historical data. And right now, so, and that's the beauty of our uh, cycle analyzer, you will see in the spectrum, just um, moving into this area here. So now we just don't have one single peak. Now we clearly see that there are three clear independent peaks in the spectrum. And now you see, um, that the while just from the visual interpretation saying yeah this is just one cycle mm -hmm. and if you put just a simplistic Fourier analysis with not enough data it will show you also in the spectrum the peak just what I showed you uh, three minutes ago but if you do it the right way put the right amount of data for the detection algorithm have then a good digital signal processing algorithm you see that we now uncover Ah, there's not one cycle. There are three cycles active in the data set, which we just throw in the analyzer, right? And you see how nice this is. So this really looks, it is one cycle. But if we now use all three cycles, so we use the main dominant one, which is also the one which is visually seen, but now we add the, the, the other two cycles into the mix here, you see how this will shape the prediction of our model into the future. And you will see that even though there was high amplitude peaks from that cycle in the past, the projection of this cycle into the future will give us no clue of important bottoms or top to be expected. And if we overlay this now with the real data, now you see that we are able I mean, this is a simplistic data set, yeah? So don't take it as a, as, a, as a real data set example, but I just want to show you that if you use modern standards of digital signal processing, you will be able to identify, aha, this is not one cycle, maybe in the raw data, there are three cycles in that data set. And if they are so closely related uh, from the length as seen in the spectrum here, but have sharp peaks in the spectrum, so they are clearly differentiated to each other. It's not one big bulb there, there are three cycles. Um, then you use the combination out of these cycles to produce the composite here. And now our prediction model gets quite more accurate. So we take into account not using visually spotted or with simple algorithms identified single cycles. We can account for not to be tricked by false cycles while checking our spectrum, while using then the most top two, top three cycles to do our prediction, which is quite more powerful and successful than just using one single cycle. So that's the power of not being tricked by false cycles and be aware that even the combination of different cycles can result in a new cycle in the raw data which is just made of underlying more important cycles. Um, that's why cycle analysis is so important and that's why also and uh, this is a topic I'm very often um, addressing that's the, that's the topic why if you try to find important cycles just from visually analyzing the underlying raw data set and then trying to align cycles on important bottoms or tops on the raw data, then you might get tricked by these visual false cycles. Um, and just to highlight, our cycle scanner is able to detect the underlying root for these cycles, which then helps you to make better 
um, prediction models. Yeah, so again, another finding from Dewey, which is 70 to 80 years old. You will find it in the reprinted book now available. Um, and with knowledge still important in today's world with our modern and new technology, which we use to identify cycles. So this was just another episode to show you how important Dewey's findings are still in our today's world of cycle analysis. And even while using new tools for cycle analysis, the knowledge, yeah, which is 70 years old, is still so important to have in mind when you're using the modern tools. And maybe just to end, also someone with a tool still stays a fool. No, I mean, I think the, how was it? Uh, ah, let's ignore it. So thanks for listening for today's episode. This was another episode of Cycles TV. Um, again, pre-recorded due to some circumstances and I would like to see you in the next live episode here also to have some discussion. Thanks for watching. See you next time.